hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, still the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, Monday afternoon, it's going to be a late one tonight I think. So I think we'll do, we'll catch up on a few things that have gone on now that everybody else has rushed all their videos out. Uh, I've never been a sheep. You know, like the rest of them, we'll, we'll want to wait and see what everybody puts out. Ah, I don't know if I want to say this or that. It's not politically correct. So I'm just going to come straight out with it. All right, Josh Warrington. He's left dead here, isn't he? And he, he's going to look after himself, isn't he? Do you know what? Because nobody's going to look after him, are they? Hey. Eh? Nobody's going to look after him now. Eddie Hearn soon changed his tune, didn't he, from saying Galahad beat Josh Warrington. And Eddie Hearn's now saying, well, it was a close one. It could have gone either way. See what I mean about people who just chat loads of rubbish. So I've just jotted a few things down here uh, regarding what's going on with Josh Warrington. And he was 29 years of age, 30 and now. He's only stopped seven, so he's not a big puncher. But he overwhelms people, doesn't he? It's hard enough to get your attention, but he's not a big puncher. And I don't know, it remains to be seen how far he can go. He's been, this is harsh, this, because a good friend of mine uh, works in corner with him, Nick Manners, but I'm going to say that Josh Wanning has been protected and got people at the right time. That's what I think. Um, if Steve Wood doesn't agree, give me a ring, Steve. Pick up the phone. Give me a ring. I make a phone book, Porky's Corner. And give me a ring, and I'll just tell you that I think Josh Warrington's been protected. You got Selby at the right time, Frampton at the right time, and the Gallard fight was mandatory. And I thought he won it, but people are saying they thought he lost. So. Has he had a lot of luck? Yeah, he's had a lot of luck, but he brings a lot of money into, into City of Leeds when he fights. Puts a lot of seats, I'm going to say seats on bums, he puts a lot of bums on seats. So when it comes to the decision at the end of the night, I'm not saying boxing's corrupt, but we all know what goes on down with big ticket sellers. He's going to get the decision, isn't he? Just like Ricky Hatton at Rubik Green when he was selling loads of tickets. So, but people keep saying, oh, Josh Warrington's new promoter, Eddie they've had, they've had, they've had one over on Frank Warren. Well, Frank Warren could have kept Warrington if he wants, but the rumour doing the rounds is that he hasn't been selling out arenas. He's not been selling out. The tickets are on the slide. That's what people are saying. And people are saying that Josh is on the slide. Now, a 30 and old fighter, how can he be on slide? I don't know, but that's just a rumour doing the rounds. People are saying there's a spent force. I don't believe it. But I know with my own eyesight, when I look at his record, and he has been wrapped in cotton wool. But he's a great little fighter and he's a lovely kid. And they've got to be given respect what they've done. But Eddie Hearn couldn't deliver him a world title, could he? Couldn't deliver it without the numbers adding up. So they keep going on about home advantage and saying you've got to take fights when timing's right and that. Well, if that's the case, why is it Eddie Hearn trying to make a fight for Josh Warrington in Vegas? What happened to home advantage now? He's also putting it around saying that, well, we'll take 20,000 over to Leeds. They're not even selling out Leeds Direct Arena, so I don't know where they're going to take 20,000 to Vegas. I think we heard all that with Joshua, didn't we? They were going to swamp New York and Manhattan because Joshua was this big ticket seller. Not true. 
Not true at all. Not true at all. Hello, Pocus Corner, who's that? Uh, I'm not going to make that tonight. I'm not going to make that tonight. So, all right. I'm going to be late. All right. Working late. I'll take care. Uh, getting back to that, Joshua, when he fought Povetkin, they comped loads of people, comped and they did for Parker fight. That's why they went to New York to fight Miller. They are the numbers people now. He's only signed Josh Warrington to get one over Frank Warren. If Frank Warren had wanted to keep Warrington, he'd, he'd, he'd have kept him, wouldn't he? So, is Josh Warrington, as Terry Chappendama said on his pod a few weeks back, or last week, was it? Is he a white elephant in the room? I don't know. Do they feel that they're now going to call the shots? I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. A 30 year old fighter, 29 years of age, he's gone through all the levels. He's done it the hard way. He's a bona fide a world champion. But like I've just said to you there, Selby, Frampton, he got him at the right time. And people are saying Galahad beat him. I don't believe that. I thought he beat Galahad by two rounds. But that's open for debate, isn't it? But now he's we had the earn. Will he move up? I think he will. But is Josh Warrington difficult to deal with? Maybe. Maybe he might just be a little bit difficult to deal with. Maybe the people who are, who are, who are managing and advising him might just be a little bit, I don't know. But the kid can fight. So, but that's just my opinion, isn't it? So, what a good move by Frank Warren. Well, I, I don't think Frank Warren moved heaven and earth to keep Josh Warrington and maybe... Maybe they're a bit sensitive in the Warrington camp. Who knows? A lot of people in boxing are very sensitive, but the people who've been behind Josh Warrington from day one, they deserve massive respect. Massive for getting him to where he is. They deserve respect. But a slight little bit of looking at the fights that they've had and the fights that they've not had, and I think he might be a little bit protected. They like certain styles, don't they? Uh, so Gallagher's style for awful when they took they, they took him to the ring for that fight kicking and screaming didn't they so but uh, you know, people going on about Vegas and home advantage stop going on about home advantage in Ellen Road when you can't you can't fill these direct out unless only Matchroom can fill that out I don't know maybe Frank Warren might have been doing something wrong I don't know, but what I find amazing is how people can can leave. People can leave a promoter and then the promoter will just come out like a whore in an interview and say, well, I throw my, my toys out the pram and blah de blah and I mean, Eddie Hearn, you have to give him credit. He'll come out and he'll have a pop at himself and take all that responsibility, but he knows what happened. And a lot of people in boxing now, when you leave somebody and you go over and you cross the street and then you find out that it's not as good as what it were before, but yet the guy got you a world title. Frank Warren delivered for them, didn't he? And he got the best thing since sliced bread. But then as soon as the bumpy roads hit, the back over the street. What what but you have to look after yourself in this situation. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of it all, to be honest. I don't know what to make of it all. I don't. But I wish them well. But a little, little, tiny bit. And look at his CV and and got people at the right time. The right time. Galahad. They got him at the wrong time. Didn't they? That was a fifty-fifty fight. Would I want to see that fight again? No. I wouldn't open the curtains to watch it if it were in my back garden. Sometimes styles are all wrong for people. People say that's a cliche. No, it isn't because Muhammad Ali knocked out George Foreman. George Foreman knocked out Joe Fraser twice and Ken Norton. But Joe Fraser has a win over Ali. Ken Norton has a win over Ali. Yeah, Ali's got two wins over them. But they had a win against Ali. Foreman cunt. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Styles make fights. All right? 
So, same as partnerships sink ships. Always remember that. Partnerships sink ships. Styles make fights. 30 days catchy sayings, all right? So, nice to uh, get a video on board for today. So, I don't know when this will go out. We've become snails here at Porky's Corner. I'm late. But, onwards and upwards. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Steve Wellens, stop taking piss out my sayings. I'll have a come pay you a visit. <laughs> Only joking, Steve. Hope you're well. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking.